This is the second part of the FRS training. In this part, I will talk about PTP, the Precision Time Protocol, and explain the IEEE Standard 1588 in more depth. First, I will introduce what is the purpose of PTP. Then the messages it sends and the different node types are presented. This is followed by an introduction to its inner workings. In the end, I explain the BMC, the best master clock algorithm. PTP synchronizes clocks by sending packets over a network. The other clocks are automatically synchronized to the most accurate clock in the network. Note that PTP just synchronizes the device clocks by using the network. It does not make the packet delivery into network any more accurate, precise or faster. The target applications include for example industrial measurement and control systems, measurement devices, telecom networks and military networks. Let's start with the different message types of PTP. There are two types of them, event messages and general messages. The event message types are sync, delay request, peer delay request and peer delay response. They are all timestamped and they should be prioritized over other packets in the network to guarantee fastest possible delivery. Then there are six different general messages. Announce message is sent by the master and it is used to establish the synchronization hierarchy. Follow up, delay response and peer delay response follow up are used to send timestamps and provide information for calculating the path delay. They are explained in more depth later. Management messages communicate information and comments that are used when managing clocks. Signaling messages are communication between the clocks. There are three kinds of PTP clocks, ordinary clocks, boundary clocks and transparent clocks. Ordinary clocks are either masters or slaves. A grandmaster clock is the source of time information for the PTP network. The grandmaster clock typically has an external clock source connected to it, or it has a very accurate internal time reference, for example an atomic clock. The master clocks send announce and sync messages, as well as respond to delay re request messages with delay response. A slave clock uses the PTP protocol to follow the time of its selected master clock. Slave selects its master using announce messages and BMC. It receives sync messages and adjusts its clock based on them. It also sends delay requests and receives delay response messages and calculates the path delay based on those. This is how the master and the slave work. The master tells its current time with a sync message, giving it a timestamp as it leaves the node. The slave timestamps the sync message as it arrives. Then the slave sends the delay request message and timestamps it when it leaves. The master timestamps the delay request message when it arrives. Then the master sends this timestamp for the slave with the delay response message. After this, the slave can count the pass delay. Then the slave can adjust its clock based on the sync messages and the pass delay it just counted. In short, the master distributes the time information to all of the slaves. The slaves count the delay for the master and who's correct the time for themselves based on the delay and the time given by the master. A boundary clock is a clock that is located between two or more network segments. 
a boundary clock acts as a slave clock in one of the network segments and as a master in the other segments. Boundary clocks forward the clock information from one network segment to another. A boundary clock must be used if the PTP operating mode changes, for example from end-to-end to peer-to-peer. -to -peer. In other words, BC must be used if one part of the network is peer-to-peer -peer and another end-to-end. Here is a picture of the structure between slaves, masters, ordinary and boundary clocks. One port in boundary clock is in slave mode and the others in master mode. BC gets its time information from a master clock. Transparent clocks are integrated into devices that forward packets in the network for example, Ethernet switches. By modifying PTP messages as they pass through the device, transparent clock removes the effect of the node's own packet forwarding and queuing delays. All the switches in an Ethernet network should be transparent clocks or boundary clocks if they are located between network segments. A node can can also be both a transparent clock and a slave or master clock at the same time. PTP transparent clock has two operation modes, end-to-end -end and peer-to-peer -peer transparent clocks. In transparent clock end-to-end -end mode, the master and slave work the same way as they do without TC. There can be any number of transparent clocks between the master and the slave. There are two possible clock operating modes that affect how the event messages are sent, one-step clock and two-step clock. In one-step clock, the time information is sent in a single sync messages and in two-step mode, the time information is sent in a separate follow-up message after the sync message. Let's see the, an animation of how the protocol operates in end-to-end -end mode. First, the master tells the time with a sync message, giving it a timestamp as it leaves. The slave timestamps the sync message as it arrives. If one-step mode is used, the timestamp is added to the sync message itself. In two-step mode, a follow-up message is sent, which contains the timestamp for the sync message. Next, the slave sends the delay request message and timestamp it when it leaves. The master timestamps the delay request message when it arrives. Then the master sends this timestamp for the slave with the delay response message. After this, the slave can calculate the pass delay and correct its time. In end-to-end -end mode, TC adds the residence time to the correction field of all PTP event messages that go through it. Residence time is the time the message spent in the node. This way, the transparent clock integrated into the node corrects the jitter and delay to node, for example, an Ethernet switch, causes. Here you can see the formulas used to count the path delay and slave offset from the master. Peer-to-peer -peer clocks calculate the delays for the links in the network unlike in end-to-end -end mode, where the delay is calculated for the whole path between the master and the slave. So in this picture, the delay would be calculated separately between the nodes A and B, and between the nodes B and C. First, let's look what happens between nodes B and C. First, the slave node C sends a peer delay request message and timestamps it as it leaves. Transparent clock B timestamps it as it arrives and then sends a peer delay response message. 
In one step mode, the timestamp travels in the peer delay response message, and in two step mode, the timestamp travels in peer delay response follow up. In one step mode, the follow up message is not needed. Then, let's see what happens between the master clock and the tra transparent clock B. The messages are sent exactly the same way as between TCB and slave clock C. Here you can see the formula to count the delay in case of peer-to-peer -peer transparent clock. With peer-to-peer -peer transparent clock, the master sends the sync messages the same way as it sends them with end-to-end -end TC, so the peer-to-peer -peer TC does not affect the sync messages. When the sync message travels through the network, Every node adds the link delay to the correction field of the message. In the animation, these delays are the D1 and D2. In addition, the transparent clock also adds the residence time, C1, to the same correction field. There is no need for the slide to send delay request messages and find out the pass delay from the master because the delay of the whole network between the master and slave is already included in the correction field of the sync message. Thus, peer-to-peer -peer transparent clocks are transparent regarding the delay, compensating all the delay it and the previous link causes. End-to-end -end calculates the delay for the whole path, but in HSR, there are several different paths and you can't define which route the messages travel. This is why peer-to-peer -peer has to be used with HSR. Best master clock selection algorithm organizes the clocks in the network to form a tree-like structure. Master clocks use the BMC algorithm to determine whether they should remain master clocks or follow some better master. Slave clocks use the BMC algorithm to determine which master clock to follow or whether to become master clocks themselves. A boundary clock selects its master using announce messages and BMC. It searches the best master from its ports and sets the port as a slave. The other ports can be masters or in a passive mode. This is decided by BMC also. The BMC selection algorithm chooses which clock is the best one to be a grandmaster. Grandmaster can be, for example, an atomic clock or a clock synchronized to GPS time. The master for every ordinary clock and boundary clocks is selected based on which of the potential master clocks is synchronized to the best grandmaster. If the clocks are synchronized to the same grandmaster, the one with the best quality local clock is, cho is chosen. This is the end of the second part. Please continue to the third one, in which I will continue about PTP and tell about the testing of FRS.